first off, Howard and David and John, just want to welcome y'all and say thank you so much for taking time to talk to our country music cruise friends. You know, everybody's stuck at home, you know, being quarantined and social distancing and trying to get through this, this crazy uncertain time. So uh, first thing I want to ask you, well, you know, thanks so much for doing this. And first thing I want to ask is, how are you spending the quarantine time? What's it like down there on the ranch? We'll start with you guys. Well, we're in the middle of calving season right now, and it's good, it's good to be home because I had to, had to deliver a couple of them. So uh, that's been, uh, you know, that's kept us on our toes. We're planting gardens. We've been playing with Blake Selton doing it in front of 18,000 people a night to planting a garden to survive. I mean, that's <laughs> just like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> been thinning peas this week in the garden. So it was a long way from the LA Forum we were playing last couple of weeks ago with Blake. I don't know which I like best. I kind of like this farming thing. <laughs> well, that's something you're used to. How long has that the ranch been in y'all's family? 150 years. This year, 150 years. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. But well, we Tell haven't people. farmed. And Howard's been here the whole time. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That came out, didn't <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but tell people a little bit about what the you know how many acres and what it's like down there on the ranch well, well this this place we're on this is our old what we call the old home place that we grew up on and there's a couple of hundred acres here and uh, we keep a group of what we call the mama cows here and raise raise babies you know brahma cows and uh so, with a big hump every day is hump day yeah our, every day is hump day. <laughs> So it's pretty laid back down here. We've got our little studio next door, so we can uh, go in there and cut a cut a record if we want to. And mm -hmm. it's a laid back lifestyle. But um, as you know, this, I think this is probably the longest break we've had in at least twenty years. Our lives, maybe our whole life, our yeah. career. Yeah, that's true. Because you are always on the road. Oh we never. I don't know if I ever remember being off the road this long. I don't know where the end is. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and John, what are you and Robin doing? Where are y'all hunkered down at and how are you spending the quarantine time? Well, we're here at our, our massive spread in our neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, we, we got almost a third of an acre. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not having to give, help give birth to any baby calves out there, right? <laughs> not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> I wish. Um, I miss, I, we, we've always lived on, you know, we, we had a little place north of Athens for many years. And, and then when, when we left there, we, we had a couple other places over the years, but I sure miss it. But it, it's a nice little neighborhood we live in there. We, we got a little closer to Nashville to take care of business for a little while. But, uh, but uh, I guess mainly what I've been doing, I've been, uh, we've been spending a lot of time online. We've been doing a lot of these things. We, 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 uh, I kind of created a little a character. My my, I've got a grandbaby due the end of this month, our first one, oh. and uh, the kids started calling me Papa Bear, mm -hmm. my, my kids, and, mm -hmm. uh, and B E R R instead of B E A R, Bear mm -hmm. for, for short for Barry, Papa Barry, mm -hmm. Papa Bear. <laughs> and so I have I have been going online on Sunday nights and doing this little thing of of. Uh, uh, songs and stories for kids with Papa Bear. Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot of fun. And basically I read kids stories and sing some songs and, you know, just just entertain children. And, that is uh, so cool. We've, we've sort of expanded that a little bit. We're getting ready to start doing another little thing called uh, Bedtime Bible Stories with Papa Bear. And we're gonna do oh, it we're gonna those on our YouTube channel. There'll be five a week on there. And uh, that is so wonderful. That, staying busy and, you know, so. Boy, you're being really productive, you know. <laughs> Most people I know are just kind of sitting around the house eating, you know. <laughs> Y'all are staying very busy. <laughs> ain't a four D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. And and you know, like for me, I'm still doing interviews, writing stories, and like I see people online, you know, friends are like, I'm learning Spanish, I'm learning to paint. I'm like, you know, who has it? You know, that's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody I know is kind of like you guys. They're, you know, they've got new ventures going, things happening, writing songs, doing, you know, concerts. And but I love the Papa Bear thing. Will that be, it sounds like it should be a children's book series as well as the, the, the podcast stuff. 
Well, well, you never know. Uh, never know what it'll turn into. We are getting ready. We, we recorded our first couple of episodes of a podcast, uh, Faith, Family, and Friends with Robin and John Barry. And um, so Robin and I, we've done the first couple of just me and her sitting at the kitchen table and talking about our lives. And then uh, we've got a, a Richie Foray. I'm going to be talking to Richie Foray this week. And uh, he and I are going to, uh, he'll be our first guest on the podcast, and at least first recorded guest. And uh, now so it's going to see if I can get a couple of fellas down in Florida and maybe let me ch chat with them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, but we're just going to focus on, you know, our, 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 our careers and, and how our faith has played into it and how our families played into it and all that. Yeah, stuff. sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that. wonderful. Good, good timing for that, too. It's a um, it's great time for, for that. That's, that's, um, that's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. With y'all being off the road, do you find you have more time to write songs? And have you written anything out of this experience? It's such a unique time in our country's history. I'll tell you, the, everybody's going to have a song about this. Yeah, so I think yeah. you should stay away from Yeah, I think so. there's going to be quite a few songs. Um, <laughs> i tell you how bad it is here, though. See, Howard got quarantined with his new fiance. Okay. Congratulations! <laughs> it's been good. I got <laughs> my mother-in-law and four dogs. <laughs> not, not so much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've been in his barn a lot. Just, you know. <laughs> so, we're, we're doing a few things around the studio, and uh, you know, working on a few things. We, we've been. Um, uh, John Schneider took over our website last week and did a you know a, a, did a, a, a takeover basically mm -hmm. and so we're, we're going to try to take his over this coming week so we're, we're we've been annoying him some mm -hmm. oh that's cool yeah we've been having fun we've been having you know all kind of stuff we it's come up mm -hmm. what's the most unusual thing that you've done during the the quarantine like brad paisley was doing a zoom thing yesterday and he was kind of <laughs> he said somebody needs to shut down his wife's instagram because he colored Kim's hair and she put it on Instagram. He goes, that's something he didn't want anybody know when he was home doing. <laughs> well, I think, I don't know if, we, I don't know if we can say this on here or not, but I think the most unusual thing we've done is we, we released our medical marijuana line during the, during the shutdown. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, it, it, it came, it just, it was supposed to happen in earlier March and the, um, uh, the DOH was obviously swamped because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so it, it shoved it back a little, and then they called us one day, right in the middle of all this, and said, "Hey, we're coming, we're coming with it, with it now." So we, um, you know, got with Scott and everybody, all the publicists, and put them with the the company here. And so it's out. It came out. The old hippie stash is a real thing. Mm -hmm. That is great. <laughs> that is so cool. But, uh, yeah. Is it available everywhere? About yeah, that. that's all we can say about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been working on it a long time, and so it was really, it was a really great thing. And 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 you know, uh, it's it's a little controversial, but you know, we've seen it work on so many people. You know, and Florida's got a lot of elderly people like like us, and um, mm -hmm. you know, it, and it and it really has a lot of benefits. So we're we're real happy about that. That is so cool. But uh, you guys have always got something interesting happening, you know, whether it's the, the TV show or, you know, touring with Blake or, you know, that uh, there's always something popping. But like you said, this is like the first time you've been off the road for an extended period of time that, uh, that that's just got to feel weird because you guys, like, if you look at your schedule, you're always somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it caught me by surprise. I woke up in my house every morning and wonder where I am. <laughs> Yeah. It's true. I'm going to be here the rest of my life. <laughs> Have y'all like given any thoughts to uh, to when dates will start back up again? Like this fall or do you know or is it still kind of up in the air? We've rescheduled pretty much. That's the odd thing about this. I don't believe we've lost hardly any dates. We've rescheduled all of them. So right. uh, most of them start back as, as early as July and go through the, the, the spring of next year. Of course, you could have played them twice instead of once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and how about you, John? When will you get back out on the road? Have you determined yet? Uh, no. I mean, we've got dates in July. You know, the ones in June just got pushed back. So, mm -hmm. 
everything's been rescheduled except one, I think, two. We have two we had to bail on that they weren't able to reschedule. So uh, we'll yeah, that's, this, that seems this, like it's like, kind of how it's been, you know. That seems to be the norm. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, there's going there's going to be some bus fuel getting burnt this fall. Don't you know? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope that diesel stays as cheap as it is right now. Come on. Oh, I know that's been a good thing, you know. John, I'm curious. I see the guitar behind you. Who all has signed that? Um. Uh, well, these two are, um, this one over here is from uh, Songs and Stories Season 1, the TV oh, show right. I did. Mm -hmm. And it's got uh, uh, Leroy Parnell, Mark Wills, Susie Boggess, Colin Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus, Mo Pitney, Clay Walker, mm -hmm. Deborah, uh, Deborah McClinton, Billy Bean. Um, mm -hmm. It's not there. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan. Mm -hmm. And... Mm -hmm. I can't make out who the other one is. And then, <laughs> oh, this, cool. <laughs> then season two, we got Mac McAnally and Steve Doris, um, Rodney Foster, Pam Tillis, Bell Worley, Rhonda Vincent, Brian White, John Schneider, uh, Terry Clark, and Tracy Lawrence, and Exile. Oh, wow. That's cool. I just saw those in the background. I thought, oh, viewers are going to want to know, you know, <laughs> the significance of those. <laughs> And uh, well, you know, look this is signed, very... look who signed this one. Oh, look at that. That's a book. Oh, Buck Owens. Oh, that's oh, amazing. Yeah, that I just had so this cool. one. I just had this one restored. Buck, oh. gave me, Buck gave me this guitar the first, uh, first or second time I played there. And I just had it restored. A guy did a great job, put found the original style keys that were on it and had this uh, uh, headstock plate rebuilt to, to match exactly what was on the original guitars. Cause cool. it had all fallen apart. It was so thin, you know, the original was so thin and, uh, but he completely redid it. Just did a beautiful job. Yeah. So, oh, that's gorgeous. That is so cool. Together <laughs> again. Right. My tears have stopped falling. Yeah, that's oh. great. Great little guitar. You, you pick that guitar up, you naturally just sing a Buck Owens song. <laughs> it just, it just comes out, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is great. Awesome. With it, with everything that's been happening in the world, you know, it, it, these are scary times, you know, people losing their lives, people losing their jobs and their, you know, their livelihoods. And so people are looking for things that, that, that bring them comfort and peace. So what is your faith meant to you during this time? I, I think uh, pretty people much everything. Have, yeah, <laughs> people that haven't prayed in a long time are, are praying now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, I, I think it. I think it's going to humble the whole nation, or the whole world. You know, it got to be a big rat race as it was. We all knew things were going crazy. Mm -hmm. This kind of had uh, given us time to think about all of this, and if we come out of it alive, I think it's going to be a better place. Actually, mm -hmm. there's that fabulous, fabulous verse of the Bible that says, "If my, my if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land." Mm -hmm. What a concept, huh? Amen. Yep. Amen. Yeah. But, it, but it, you know, it it is it's really shown me that you know God is faithful. He takes care of us, and uh, and He's faithful to us, and we should be faithful to Him. And and uh, it's been a wonderful opportunity to, to draw closer to Him. And I mean, you you know, we 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 get so busy with our normal lives, you know, we we, we misprioritize things and. All of a sudden, we can we have these moments that we can really reflect on what's going on with our lives and and what really is important. And uh, the time that we spend on this earth, as as you know, you, you fellas, you fellas, we all know. I mean, like, man, I, I read. I, I have, you have to forgive me, but the, the the gentleman that was part of the Oak Ridge Boys who passed away this week. Uh, oh, the, the Gary McFadden. Yeah. Gary McFadden. Was he 72? Mm -hmm. 72, so. 72 is not as old as it used to be. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. No, it's not. And this, this life is a fleeting but a vapor in the wind. But the mm -hmm. time that we will spend in eternity is, <laughs> it's eternity. And uh, mm -hmm. it, gives us a, it gives us pause to, to think about our mortality and, and to where we will spend that, that eternity. Mm -hmm. so, either in either in the, the presence of God or 
out of the presence of God. And I, I choose the presence of God. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of people that hadn't thought about that probably in a long time that are, are talking to God again and are, are thinking about where they're going to spend eternity, you know? That, uh, well, it's definitely a tension getter, this, um, this whole thing, you know, it's, I mean, who imagine this? I mean, of all things, anything else to happen, right? Oh, yeah. And, and this was, you know, it's one of those side swipe deals that you, you're looking in the wrong direction mm -hmm. for some issues, but uh, it's coming mm -hmm. from, and it, mm -hmm. it, it may be from a higher source, who knows? Yeah. Uh, maybe a reason for it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, it's here and it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Well, no matter, no matter where the okay. circumstances, no matter where the circumstances come from, they can either be used for good or for bad. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it all depends on how we let it, how we let it affect us and how we treat mm -hmm. it. All circumstances mm -hmm. can be used for, uh, for God to use to draw us to him. Mm -hmm. All circumstances. But also, we, we, some, sometimes we might run from it. And... Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, this I, I choose, you know, like I said before, I choose to run to him and away from him. So yeah. And uh, have y'all has there been anybody close to you that's been affected by COVID nineteen? Uh, Joe. Joe. Joe I Jimmy. know. Yeah. That was that was just amazing. It's yeah, just heartbreaking. Yeah, he and his wife were you know, they were coming to Denver to, to the show with the Blake's show, you know. They were gonna meet us. So yeah, it's, it's. And I was on the phone with a another journalist friend when she got the email about Joe, and I just I just started crying. I just couldn't believe it. We had, you know, he was on the cruise last yeah. year, guys. When you were, and so much fun. He and Tara, his wife. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, they were they were coming out to the. I think the, we were like one show away from the Denver show when they pulled the plug on the tour, and, and uh, mm -hmm. so they, they sent a message and they, they couldn't come out, but. Yeah, it's just it was just terrible, you know. And, and yeah. of course, John Pine passed away too. And you know, I mean, there's nobody immediately that we, uh, fortunately, in, in our family friends here where we live, that we that we have been experienced mm -hmm. a really bad problem with. But although we have, you know, we have 20 or so cases in the hospital here. Yeah. But uh, and not to mention the people on the front lines of all this. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. because, um, you know, we, we're lucky enough to get to sit at home and play around with the cows and the pasture, and plant guards and all that. There's, there's people that, you know, it's their job. And uh, you're finding out uh, who the he real who re heroes are. Mm -hmm. They really are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, what about you? Have, have, has it hit anybody close to you? Um, no, we, we, we have some friends that, you know, have you know, we're one step away from some folks. We do have a friend who lost their, their grandmother, passed away from it, and and uh, uh, not not anyone directly that is part of our family or direct friends. You know, so that's good. That's, we're hoping pray it stays that way. You know, I hope so. Okay. Are there songs that like give you comfort during this time that like would you like to share with the viewers? You know, things songs that mean a lot to you that you kind of. You know, when there's an unsettling time like this, you kind of draw from, strength from? Um, yeah. I put up, on Easter morning, I put The Old Rugged Cross by Johnny Cash. Oh, oh that's a great song. Yeah. I just interviewed Loretta Lynn earlier this afternoon, and she said that song always makes her cry every time she hears it. Oh, good. How's she doing? Is she good? She's good. She turned 88 on Tuesday. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, we sent her a birthday wish. Uh, yeah, she's she's got a new book coming out. I think it came out last week, and she's doing great. She overcame. You know, she had a stroke about three years ago and broke her hip. And but she said she's good now. She's getting out and walking on her walker, and you know, got a new puppy. She's she's happy. <laughs> so did I. I always got a new puppy. That's something else. I got a, a, a puppy named him Bug. B U G. We lost <laughs> we lost an uncle last year. Oddly enough. Uh, before all this happened, we, we, we lost an uncle to a very similar thing. He got pneumonia and died in three days. No one could figure it out. And now we're wondering what it was. It was like way uh, before the, yeah, mm -hmm. all this, like three, three last, months before, mm -hmm. last um, in August or September. Yeah, and he was mm -hmm. quite 
he was late seventies, but uh, he wasn't sick. Hmm. But he got him like that. So, but anyway, his name was Uncle Bug. <laughs> but we named her Puff, Puffy Bug. Ah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> That's neat. What kind of puppy is it? It is a, a cur dog. Oh, okay. Black, black and tan cur dog. Ah, oh, that's cool. I'm tired of these <laughs> pussy dogs. I want to get one that can help me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, John, what about you? Like, do you have a favorite song in, in uh, Times of Turbulence? Oh, gosh. Just playing music, you know? Just playing music, it just that just soothes my soul, man. Mm -hmm. And no, 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 not anything in particular. Just, just to sit down and play. Mm -hmm. That's true. And uh, and what's the thing that you are most looking forward to doing when everything hopefully goes back to normal? You know, in coming weeks. You know, is there a restaurant you miss visiting, or you know, being on stage? You're like, what's the thing that you're most anxious to get back to when life goes back to normal? I just want to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you come out the yeah. Yeah, you, we've, got, we've got enough room for some social distancing down here. Come on. Uh, <laughs> I love one that. My, one of my friends says now she knows why her dog runs out the door every time she comes home and opens it. <laughs> yeah. She has that feeling. You know? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I well, know you know, this. I'm going to bed earlier and I haven't gone to bed. And every every night gets earlier, and I'm up at seven thirty every morning. And you know, I was being on the road for so many years. I was sleeping, I you know, sleep in, and then take a nap. Mm -hmm. before. But I'm no spring chicken. Mm -hmm. But uh, my schedule is I'm a, I'm a farmer now. It's uh, you know, bed about nine thirty or ten. I'm out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. That's. <laughs> I, I miss I miss my I miss my diesel clone. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> truck stop that, breakfast takes a long time to get that diesel off of you yeah <laughs> yeah you miss the sound of that generator while you're sleeping oh yeah mm -hmm. that's true <laughs> you know of course we're we're doing this for our wonderful you know friends from the country music cruise and uh you know Obviously, you get that Howard and David job been a couple of times. John, you just did the one this this past January. So, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the memories from the cruise. Like when you think back about those good times, especially now that we're all stuck in the house. <laughs> what you you know? What are your favorite memories of those times on the country music cruise? You, you mean other than the buffet? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's everybody's favorite. Other than the buffet. <laughs> everybody hates the buffet, but everybody's always there. It's like the crazy thing. Uh, but you know, you know that's the probably the last place we were talking about Joe Diffie. Probably the last place we saw Joe and Kenny Rogers was on the cruise. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and true. Yeah, I was going to bring. I, I meant to bring my uh, Kenny Rogers tambourine to the interview today. I've got it at the studio. Oh. He gave us a tambourine and signed it on the cruise. So, um, uh, but that's the last place we saw them. And you know, just seeing everybody. And of course, we filmed an episode of our show on the cruise. That, turned out pretty cool we had everybody that was on there probably well Johnny Lee and uh, was on there and uh, TG exactly, and yeah. was on there and uh, Shenandoah did a song for <laughs> us and it was just a lot of fun we got to see old Bobby Bear on there oh yeah we got to see Bear on there I had to see mm -hmm. him and he yeah. a lot of these especially mm -hmm. well yeah. I got I got I got some pretty good uh, personal connections with both Kenny and with Joe, uh, Joe recorded that song, Ships That Don't Come In, mm -hmm. that literally changed my life. Not, mm -hmm. not sort of, not sort right. of inspired me. It right. literally changed my life. Because I was playing clubs in Athens, Georgia, and I had a little spread up north of Athens. Uh, by the time I left there, I had about 154 acres. And uh, by the time we sold it, I was playing clubs all around North Georgia and Athens, especially in in uh, the surrounding area and I was making a really good living and I kept driving home one late one Saturday night from a gig and it was in early February of 92 and uh, mm. DJ said we got this brand new song from Joe Diffie and I, I love Joe mm -hmm. I turned the volume up he sang that song ships that don't come in mm -hmm. when he sang that line and those who stand on empty shores and spit against the wind and those who wait forever for ships that don't come in when he mm -hmm. sang that it hit me like freight train 
Mm-hmm. And I went and woke my wife up and I told her, I said, I heard this song about Joe and I've dreamed bigger than this. And we stayed up mm-hmm. all night, came up with a plan to come to Nashville every six weeks and do industry showcases until we got somebody interested. Mm-hmm. And uh, we came up and we did one uh, May of 92. And we sent out 250 invitations to industry professionals. And one mm-hmm. guy showed up off that list, Herky Williams. Oh. And he, he worked for Jimmy Bowen and got me a record deal. Mm-hmm. So that song literally changed my life. Great and story. years before, before I, before I started that journey, um, I'd gotten to know Kenny because I lived on the other side of the county in Madison County from where Kenny right. lived. And, uh, and he had invited me to come out and play at his, uh, uh, the big tournament they had at his farm, that, a couple mm-hmm. of days of fishing, golfing, and basketball. And they'd have a big entertainment thing. And he invited me to come play. And uh, years later, he, invited, he asked if I'd come and, and be a part of his book, that photo album, the black and white photo album he did. Yeah. And uh, he took a print from that picture and sent it to me. This is a picture of me that he shot. And, wow. uh, and, and, and he made, he autographed it down here at the bottom for me. And, and, uh, and on the, in the back, there's a letter from Kenny that, that we included in the back, you know, and, and uh, just, a, uh, just uh, other than the subject, it's a beautiful shot that he put together. And, so, that is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. wow. So, that, is really cool. that is so cool. And yeah. you know, John, you might not have this like readily available, but if you did, I want to ask you about it. Remember the Bible you told me about that where people had written, handwritten it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, let, me, let me show you that. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. It's getting good now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a, uh, this is a, it's called the Bible Across America. And it, uh, fellas, uh, y- I don't know if y'all know, but I had, can- had throat cancer last year. Yeah. Uh, this time last year, I was going through chemo and radiation and stuff. And, and uh, uh, so many people sent very thoughtful gifts. Uh, this particular one, means so much to me. This is more than just a Bible. This Bible, every chapter is handwritten. Wow. People got, people, every, actually every verse is written by somebody different. Really? Oh, wow. And, and in the middle of it, well, there's the card of the, the folks who gave it to me, but in the middle of it, it talks about them going to different parking lots all around the country and setting up and people would come and and they would be they would be hand they would be given a bible verse to write out uh here's a soldier here who's writing out his verse and different people and uh so it's the entire bible is is completely handwritten children you can look at them and you can see uh Sometimes there'll be somebody that's, that's uh, relatively young who's writing out something. And, um, you know, this right here is written out a bit, might be a younger person writing out. And, and then you'll, you'll find somebody's handwriting that is, is, you know, very, very, very formal, you know. Uh, just a lot of different things. It's just beautiful. Imagine that, getting to write John 3.16. That's an amazing that's yeah. first for me. Yeah, I, I, yeah. When I first saw this for the very first time, and I read through this, I, I just shed tears. It was just so moving. I, I never you heard know, it. It just, it just came to life, you know. Yeah. So. That is so cool. Thank you for grabbing that and showing us. <laughs> you well, told me about that in a previous interview, and I just thought that sounded so cool. He's got yeah, stuff he's, in that room there. Is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I got lots of stuff hanging on the wall. Y'all got some pretty stuff back there hanging on the wall at y'all's place. Yeah. That's yeah. Some pretty stuff. Oh, my hat. <laughs> All those gold and platinum <laughs> albums. Woo. Hey, don't let it fool you. Uh, our, our stash of toilet paper is right over there. <laughs> Are y'all hoarding? We're hoarding. Yeah. yeah. It's time to hoard. You know yeah. what? We, we got a thing down here called Spanish moss if the toilet paper runs out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's that's bad that's bad oh, no. are y'all having I'm just curious are y'all having groceries and stuff delivered or are y'all going out in the mask and gloves or um 
we week. bought a new freezer the day this started because it just looked like, hey, this thing is real. And uh, got the last freezer in the county, got lucky, got in, and a friend of ours was grass feeding some beef. We got a whole beef in the freezer. And, uh, wow. Yeah, Locking up immediately because uh, we, we got plenty of protein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> Chickens on the yard better look out. <laughs> Chickens are laying really good right now, too, so that's good. Oh, that's wow. Good. <laughs> yeah, so y'all don't have to worry about going to Kroger. You got everything right there. <laughs> We've got a lot of it here. I, the, the garden's still not in yet, but we're, we're, we got a lot of it in. Peas are about that high. Yeah, the peas are coming up. Oh, that's awesome. So, what about you, John? Are you having stuff shipped in, or are you and Robin going out and braving Kroger and Publix and stuff? Yeah, we go. We mask up and glove up. And, and remember, Robin called me a few minutes ago. She just left the grocery store. And she said, I just, do people not realize that there's, a, there's problems? She said, nobody had on masks. Nobody had on gloves. It's like the first sign that things might be improving a little bit, they just go back to normal. Yeah. You know, man, this is not normal. Man. This yeah. is it's serious yeah. business. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's not going away in a while. It's still going to hang no, I I had read somewhere that like for, as far as New York and L.A., like the mayors of those cities are saying no major concerts till 2021. Well, good thing mine aren't major concerts. Playing the forum for a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when we were at the forum that night, which is almost well next to the last show we did we were at the forum that night i was wondering i was going man i don't know how much longer they're going to let us get away with this we were we were like staying right at the la airport because you know, this where you need to stay at an airport right during all this Ooh. so yeah, we were in a hot zone we really were mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Very cool. oh, i'm glad all y'all are healthy and, and safe and and doing well and before we wrap up our i love this story this is like one of my favorite cruise stories Talk about sun, sitting out in the sun on your, your deck in the elevator coming by. <laughs> Not to embarrass you, but I just think this is the cutest story. <laughs> Too old to embarrass. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they gave me a, you know, all the rooms are small on those ships. So now I must say, next time I go on this cruise, I want a, a suite. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they put me in a room right by that glass elevator. Uh, you know, you see uh, the elevator and I, I didn't realize I was by an elevator. I just, you know, walked out on my, uh, my balcony there and hadn't had any sun in a while. So I just, you know, I thought I was alone. So I stretched <laughs> out, out there pretty much the way I came into this world. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden I look up and David, Susan, everybody was coming down there, people just waving at me and I was laying there buck stitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we, we thought he was on the nudist cruise. <laughs> oh my goodness that's a <laughs> i tell you y'all have the best <laughs> stories <Y 'all> have <laughs> which a lot of them are in that part that was not a book but y'all's book you know i mean i don't see how you found time to tour as much as you have do the book strike this new deal with the, the medical marijuana i mean y'all always have stuff going on. same thing with john and what he and robin are doing you know with the the, the children's podcast and she's you know the this, the Berry family's always got a million different irons in the fire, like the Bellamy family, you know. What to, as y'all, you know, look towards the next coming year, like what are some of the goals or, you know, once we all get through this pandemic thing, like what what can fans expect from you the remainder of the year? We're going uh, to try to get us another record done, uh, <laughs> either a gospel record or just a regular record, but one or the other. And, uh, there, of course, you know, Brian Smith, my manager, he's been badgering me about writing a book and, uh, yep. I, I keep telling them I've lived it. It's boring. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to read it. I promise. <laughs> but they've been beating up about that. So we'll see. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of underway. I've been working with John St. Augustine on it. So we'll see what happens. All right. And, uh, but then uh, if, ho hopefully everything gets back to normal. We can go to our little Christmas run this year. So. All right. Cool. You know, the, the book, I think, the book was one of the hardest things I think we did. Uh, just keeping that going because you know it's like writing 500 songs <laughs> it's, it's like it's like <laughs> you know it just goes on and on so 
it was one of the harder projects, I think, but we're, we're pretty happy when we got finished with it. So I'm glad mm -hmm. we did it. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if all the stuff we've rescheduled happens, you know, they're looking at most of it starting in early July and, and going all the way. But if all of that happens, I think we will, we maybe will have off Christmas day. The rest yeah. of them, the rest of them will be making up gigs. <laughs> Can I be y'all's opening act? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. We, you I, but we, we've rescheduled so many dates. I mean, it's like, you know, usually when you play two or three times a week, you know, we're going to be playing like four or five times a week because they, yeah. they're just all they slam through. And but the you know, you worry about your, your, your boys that's been with it for years and your, your whole entourage, you know, because it's got everybody down. Yeah. You got, you, it's a big responsibility. And you, yeah. You're just so helpless. That's the, the bad mm -hmm. part. And we really don't know when it's going to start again. You know, we we hear move. I'm going. Well, we're going to move it up, move it up a little. Well, yeah, everybody's everybody's being optimistic about it being from maybe from summer on, but uh, you know who knows? It may well, not we'll be. see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, whenever guys that work with me that when they when we're not out on the road, they play down in Nashville a lot. You know, and and uh, they do the play the Broadway gigs, and they had zero work. Right. No. Oh, so. And the yeah, other, and the other thing, our crowd's going to come out. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I'd want to come out in the crowd, and I hear all the sports things are setting them way back. So, I think this may be a, a little more difficult than we even think it is. But I, I'm not being mm -hmm. negative. Uh, the other they're, they're opening up. They're opening up. They're opening up a few of the beaches in Florida t uh, tomorrow, this weekend, or something. They're open up a few. Jacksonville opened up, and they're just trying to get it out so people can get can exercise and you know still keep distances. So that's a good, I guess. It'll be hard to sing with a mask on. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. No, n nobody's gonna gonna want to sit on the front row. No. <laughs> I spit a lot. Yeah. That's true. Well, guys, I appreciate y'all taking time. And just before we wrap up, just wanted to ask you any, you know, anything you want to tell the fans. And uh, that's one of the things I love about the Country Music Cruise is I have made some of my best friends on there. Like, you know, the, there's a girl that's a nurse here in Nashville that she and I hang out and go to the movies, and, well, before all this happened, and do stuff. And I just think it's just the sweetest bunch of people. I have friends that now in Connecticut that, you know, I stay in touch with. Um, mm. I don't know. I just, I, I just love the, our little bunch you know <laughs> now, anything you know that you'd like to say to, to encourage will, the our country will, music cruise community i will say that you can hardly we can hardly go anywhere play anywhere that we don't run into somebody who was on the one of those cruises i mean mm -hmm. everywhere people will come up in a in a meet and greet or whatever you know or, or come by the bus and say hey, i was on the cruise with you guys i saw you guys and kenny rogers and so i mean it's fascinating because everybody Wherever we go, we're on one. So it, it, mm -hmm. they really That's true. Mm -hmm. I, I just got, I got a, a photo in the mail this past week of uh, a young lady and her mom, and uh, and she had wanted me to sign the picture for her mother for uh, Mother's Day, and it was a picture of us together on the cruise ship. Oh, <laughs> that's Great. so cool. That is neat. Well, anything else, guys, before we wrap up that uh, we need to let people know is happening? Or? Tell them to hang in, trust in the Lord. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna, <laughs> yeah, it's going to pass. Yeah, it yeah. will pass. That's true. Some, some days it feels like this is going to go on forever, but this is, you know, it'll it'll get resolved, you know. And, it, and one of the things that's been so cool is just to see how people have been – you know, looking out for each other, you know, delivering mail, you know, I mean, delivering meals to elderly people and, you know, just kind of taking care of each other and calling and checking up on everybody more. And like one of my young cousins lives in Pigeon Forge, works for a restaurant, which of course is closed. And she and her friends are making posters and driving by, you know, some of their, their customers that would come in the restaurant are older and, you know, they're worried about them. So they're driving by their house with posters and messages for them, which I just thought was sweet, you know. Yeah. It best mm -hmm. it, 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 some people. It does. Mm -hmm. 
Well, cool. I think that's it. And that, you know, Janine and her magic will edit all this together. I appreciate y'all taking time to do this, you know. Thank you, Deborah. Give Susan a big hug and congratulations Thanks, on the everybody. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks so I'm much. I'm old hippie and I don't know what to do. Should I hang on to the old? Should I grab on to the I'm an old hippie and life is just a bus. Ain't trying to cheat nobody. I'm trying real hard to just. I love this. Oh, I love that. that.